Hello lover friends, this week we have a new collection method, failed commands, a new validation rule and more just for you. Let's go! First, I'd like to show an update on the model show artisan command. In level, we have this artisan command called model.show and if I provide a specific model which I have in this application, you will see we receive a bunch of information about this model. Table, database, the attributes, relation, observers, and now brand new, we also have events which was not um, supported before. Okay, so what do we have to do in order to see here events? On models in Lava, like this podcast model, there is a property called dispatches events, which is an array. And what we can do here is we can link events of our models, like for example, updated um, to a custom one. And I've created a custom one, podcast updated event, so I can provide the class here. And let's try another one. Deleted is also one. So when our model is deleted, we want to link it to a specific custom event, which is from our application. So podcast deleted. So this event will be triggered as well when we delete a podcast. Let's run this again here. And you can see now under events, we see those two new entries for updated and deleted. And on the right, we can see which of our custom events are now being triggered. Thank you, Wendell. Next, there is a new collection method that you probably already know from PHP. In PHP, we have this array shift and the array unshift method. We're going to take a look at those with this example of this fruits array where we have an apple, banana, and a strawberry. So here I'm dumping out first what we get back by calling array shift when we provide our fruits array, and then I'm dumping out the fruits array again. So let's run this here and think of where you can see array shift gives me the first item of my array which is an apple, which we can see here. And the second time where we're here now returning our fruits array, you can see that the apple is gone now. So array shift will also remove the first item from the array. Similar to this, we also have an array unshift method. And what this does, you can provide now a second argument here to this method. And we can say we want to add a lemon to our array. And if we run this, you can see the first output which we get is four. So this means this new output which we get here is not an item, it's the count and tells me how many items are inside our fruits array, which you can see here. And yeah, lemon was added here to um, the front of our array and also the keys were rearranged. So probably nothing new for you here because you already knew about those methods which are already in PHP for quite a long time. But now we want to talk about level and collections. So let's create a collection here um, by providing our fruits array. And now let's dump out what we get back when we run collection shift. And then we're going to dump out as well our collection. Similar as before, but now we're working with collection and this basically works the same way. First shift gives us back this first item here, which is Apple. And when we return our collection, we can see that this has was changed and now Apple is not part of our collection anymore. And now what's new here, finally to the thing that's new here, we have now an unshift method on the collection level, which we didn't have before. And now we also have provide here a new value. And you can see this gets added to the beginning of the array. And you can see we have here now lemon in our collection. So unshift is now a new method on level collection, which you can use as well. Shift we had before, but unshift is the new one. Thank you, Tim. Let's talk about mailables now. When using the artisan command to make a new one, there are a few options that you could already take. Now we have a new one. Whenever you want to create a new mail, you can use PHP artisan make mail and then provide the name of your new mail, like invoice created maybe. Let's run this and if we can see what's new here is that this command provided here now a new class, which is a new mailable class. But if you check out the content, you can see we haven't provided a few. So there are now different options where you can also create a mailable with a few. So let's say we also want to create now a markdown one and let's rename this to invoice maybe updated. All right, let's take a look again what we have now. We have now this invoice updated um, class here, which is available as before, but now we also got disconnected now 
to a specific invoice updated view file, plate file, which uses Markdown, which is this one. So this was already working before in level, create only the class or create the class with a Markdown version. But now we have a new option that we can use. PHP artisan make mail, let's call this invoice deleted. And now we have a new view option. Let's use this and let's check out what this does is. We have two files here, which are new. We have the mailable as before, but now we also got this new invoice deleted plate file, which is just empty with a nice quote here. And yeah, this is the way to go if you want to create a mail with a view file, which is empty, and then just manual add the content here that you need for your mail. Thank you, Ryan. History has shown that there are many ways that I can fail an artisan command, but for everyone else, there is now a new dedicated method. I do have here this backup command, and if I'm running this currently, it's failing with the message something went wrong. Let's take a look what we're doing here. So we have the start backup process method call here, and we're catching some exceptions. And if we have one, we are running the error method, which prints out a message, and then we're also returning the correct status code. And currently this is failing just because I'm throwing here a new exception. But as you can see, this is already a little bit difficult. And if you imagine that this command gets way longer, then there are multiple ways and occasions where an exception will be thrown. So it's not as simple as this anymore. But let's start by improving this here. So what we can do now in level instead of this here, we have now this new this fail method. And let's just provide a message here. Something went wrong. Let's run this again. You can see it's also failing. It looks pretty much the same error. Something went wrong and it now prints out the correct message for us, but also returns the right status code. And what's cool about this new fail method is that you can, yeah, use it wherever you need this. Imagine this command has like, I don't know, like 10 different methods that you're calling here in the handle method. And then in each of those methods here, like starting the backup process, you can check for a specific um, return code or listen for a specific exception. And then you can use this fail method, which is now a way more convenient way to manually fail your commands. Thank you, Len. And last, I'd like to show you a new validation rule. Before we start talking about this new validation rule, let's take a look at one that we already have. So in this example, we have a course ID which we get here through a request and we get here math one-on-one. -on -one. Think about a university where you can pick courses and this is the one that we need here. So with the Laravel rule in, we can say that the value which we get here should be inside this array. So only those values here are valid. And if I'm going to run this here, you can see here I'm running the passes method on the validator to make sure it works, it's true. If it will change this value to 102, you can see this is false because we are not whitelisting this here. So yeah, this is some kind of whitelisting some values for our courses. But now I think about a different example. So I have course IDs. So this means the student takes several IDs. And the second one maybe is coding 101. Let's make this an array. So this means our rules here are changing. So what do we need here? We want to make sure this is an array. And we also want to make sure that there's a specific course, by the way, let's change this back to math 101, that is included. So for example, think about that math 101 is a course that every student has to take. So this needs to be inside this array. And now this new validation rule, which we have is called contains. And here I provide the value. So we want to make sure that math 101 is contained inside this array. Let's run this. We have an error because here yeah, we don't need this. Let's run this again and now it's true. And let's check the opposite. If I change this to math 102, now our validator is failing because yeah, math 102 um, is not a must. Math 101 should be in there and now it is. So these are two rules which are kind of the opposite. With the rule in, you want to make sure that you whitelist some specific values to make sure that the values that you get are ones that you also expect and contains just makes sure that there is a specific value inside an array that you need and want to be inside this array. Thank you, Andrew. That's it for this week. Please let me know in the comments which of the shown features you like the most and see you the next time. Bye.